the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome and thank you for joining us for this week's worship service here at St. Stephen's. By the word of God and in the power of his Holy Spirit, we ask you, Jesus, to shine your heavenly glory into our hearts, illuminating the dark places in our minds that keep us from fully seeing others through your eyes. Shine on us, we pray, as we enter into this time of worship. Church, would you pray with me? Gracious, infinite God, look upon your people and have mercy. Help us put aside our pain and emotional baggage for this time and give us ears to hear and eyes to see your hand upon our lives. Reveal by your Holy Spirit ways of compassion and forgiveness, not just for those who don't impact us personally, but also for those that do. Jesus, at the cross, you showed us the great love and compassion of God by which all our transgressions have been removed as far as the east is from the west. Move in us to do the same for ourselves and for others. Open our hearts and minds to your ways and plans that are good and perfect. We come before you now to adore and worship you. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of confession together. Gracious and loving God, we come to you for mercy, but too often we look for payback when we are wronged by others. We retaliate with harsh words and judgments and withdraw from relationships with those who hurt us. Your call for us to forgive others can seem beyond us, Help us to find the grace and the strength to forgive. Help us to realize that the source of that grace is found in the unconditional forgiveness you offer us. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the one who has redeemed us. Amen. Good morning, friends. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and has not dealt with us according to our sins. Instead, God has chosen to accept the sacrifice of his own son on our account. It is because Jesus paid fully and to the last measure that we are forgiven. And so with the Holy Spirit's help, we are free to begin to live again in right relationship with God and with each other. This is the good news of our gospel. Thanks be to God. And God's people say, Amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from the gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 21 to 35 the parable of the unmerciful servant. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked him, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants and as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged. I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him cancelled the debt and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. 
Pay back what you owe me, he, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailer to be tortured until, until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The word of God. Thanks be to God. If you've been following along with us through this summer, you'll know that we have spent these weeks looking at how God created and established the people of Israel, a people who were blessed by the promises God had made to them and who were themselves called to be a blessing to the world through their lives. Today, we are shifting from that Old Testament focus to the stories of Jesus in Matthew's Gospel. And as we do that, we are going to move to considering how we are now among those people who are blessed by God and who are ourselves called to be a blessing to others. As we look at these readings over the next weeks, we are going to come to them asking what Jesus is teaching us about the ways that God has blessed us and about the ways that he may be calling us to be God's people in the world now, living lives that are lives of blessing. Today we have joined Jesus as he is teaching his first disciples about some of the challenging realities they are likely to encounter as they answer his call and follow him. In this chapter, he has been addressing some specific problems, the kind of problems that tend to pop up amongst groups of people. They include things like rivalry and competition, a lack of concern for the well-being of others, and how to address issues, the kinds of issues that sometimes pop up amongst and even between us. I suspect that Jesus is starting to see some of these things bubble amongst them. We certainly know that the parable that we are looking at today was prompted by a question from Peter, a question that actually revealed much. He said, Jesus, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Apparently, Peter was having a struggle with someone, and while he seems to have been willing to go to some lengths to offer forgiveness, it was not without limits. I have read that some Jewish teachers at the time taught that you were called to forgive someone up to three times, but that if they didn't change what they were doing and continued to offend or hurt you, then... You were not under any obligation to forgive them beyond that three times. So when Peter said to Jesus, up to seven, Lord, he probably thought that he was going the extra mile or maybe even two. But Jesus doesn't respond to him with an attaboy, Peter. He, instead, he tells this story that really reveals the flaw, not just in Peter's thinking, but in his heart. It's a story about the vital place of forgiveness in the life of God's people, the life that God invites us to. Poor Peter. You know, he was on the receiving end of some of Jesus' sharpest lessons, and this is one of them. You've heard the reading, and it's really anything but cryptic. It's pretty obvious. It's about a man who has been forgiven this huge debt and then strangely can't find it within himself to forgive a relatively minor amount that is owed to him. The lesson here is pretty obvious. 
We are people who have been blessed with mercy and grace. God has offered us complete forgiveness for all of our sins and continues to offer it, even though I know I continue to struggle. We actually remember this every week here when we say together our prayer of confession and then we get to hear those words assuring us of God's grace once again. So as people who have been blessed by God's unending forgiveness and mercy ourselves, we are called to extend that same blessing to others. Simple, hey? Well, obvious maybe, but simple? Let's be honest. There is nothing simple about offering forgiveness, especially if we're trying to offer it to someone we consider to be one of the worst offenders in our lives. Anyone who tells you that this is easy is either lying to you or lying to themselves. Because forgiving, especially forgiving those who hurt us deeply, that can be one of the hardest things that Jesus can ask us to do. Period. Which is why I, for one, need more from this lesson than just this obvious surface interpretation. Yes, we are called to offer the blessing of great mercy to others over and over and over again. But how can we possibly do that? Well, as I looked again to this story for some help with this, two things in it struck me as rather strange. The first was the amount of gold that the man owed the king. Jesus said he owed him 10,000 bags of gold. People must have laughed when Jesus said that. It's an astronomical amount. I did a little research, and it turns out that one bag of gold at the time that Jesus told this parable would have been worth about 20 years' wages. That means that Jesus was saying that this man owed the king 200,000 years' wages, a debt that was far beyond his or anyone's ability to repay. So you would think that when the king just up and forgave the entire debt, the man would have been bowled over with gratitude. It was an over-the-top, extravagant expression of mercy and love a gift that was beyond precious and beyond measure. Which is exactly what makes this man's unwillingness to forgive that relatively tiny amount so very awful. Awful enough that he ended up in prison anyway at the end of it all. And that's actually the second thing that struck me as strange, and that I have to confess, I didn't like very much. The conclusion of this parable looks like it might be saying to us that when, when the man refused to forgive that tiny debt that was offered to him, he somehow lost the great mercy the king had offered him. That makes me nervous. Is Jesus saying that we can lose the mercy God has assured us of if we aren't willing to show mercy to others ourselves? That doesn't sound very much like the unconditional love of Christ that I have come to know. So what's going on here? What is Jesus trying to teach us? Well, I'm wondering if it is possible to come at this from a slightly different angle. What if Jesus isn't saying that the king withdrew the mercy that he has offered, but rather that the man's actions show us that he had never really accepted it in the first place? He gives us this character who obviously has not grasped the magnitude of the gift the king was giving him. 
If he had, there would have been no question about him going on to forgive that tiny amount that was owed to him. We can see that he received a gift that was beyond measure. But the man himself seems to have missed that. He seems to have thought that he could pay it back if he just had a little more time. We can see what preposterous thinking that was. 200,000 years wages. He obviously didn't grasp how much it would take to free him from his debt. An amount that was far more than he could ever hope to earn. But we can see it, can't we? And you know, maybe that's exactly Jesus' point. For us to see it. To see how incredible the gift of mercy the king was offering the man really was. You know, I have heard those words of assurance proclaimed over us here nearly every Sunday for the past 18 years since Jesus first captured my heart. And now I get to proclaim them regularly, and I have to tell you they are one of my favorite parts of our services. And yet the true value of the promises that are held within those words, sometimes it's easy to miss or easy to take for granted. Every week, our King offers us forgiveness and mercy beyond measure. Do I really realize what an incredible blessing that is? How precious that is. Do I remember that in that blessing, I discover my freedom? Friends, we have been blessed with God's extravagant, unending mercy, a freely given gift that is worth far more than 10,000 bags of gold. It is a gift that has cleared the way for us to discover the life we've always longed for, life beyond measure, life without end, life that eludes us without God's saving love. I hope I hope that as we really grasp this and receive God's mercy ourselves, new to us each and every day, I hope we find it easier to be a blessing in our world by being people who freely offer mercy ourselves. I hope that as we find ourselves showing mercy to others, they find themselves discovering life beyond measure. Friends, I really hope and pray for us all that as people who have been extravagantly blessed, we are able to live lives that are rich in mercy towards others. Loving, gracious, and merciful God, may it be so. Amen. Good morning, friends. Please join me in the prayers of the people. Dear God, when we look over our shoulders at fear shadowing us today, you go before us into tomorrow, making a path through the seas of yesterday's doubts. When our legs tremble from the effort of standing up for what you hope for all creation, you stand at our side, offering your hope strength. Cloud of grace, we offer our love to you. When we turn our hearts into deserts of stony bitterness, you transform them into oasis of joy. When we come up with all sorts of rules for those who come to us seeking to find you, you tear up the list, stretching wide your arms in welcoming grace. Servant of all, we offer our lives to you. When we would clasp old worries to our hearts, you open our eyes to that hope which paves the path ahead of us. When we spend each day consumed with doubts and fears, you remind us that this day is the time to honour you, God, by serving your children. Mist of mercy, we offer our hearts to you. God in community, holy in one, 
as you are all to us, so we would offer all we are to you, even as we pray, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Your faithful giving to the mission and ministry of this church is greatly appreciated. Friends, would you pray the prayer over these gifts with me? Loving God, you have shown us your love through the gift of your Son. Now, in some small way, we show our love for you through these gifts. We pray that they will be used to make your love known throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we finish for today, I have one announcement. Over the summer, three of our faithful members have been doing yeoman service here at the church, taking care and tending our gardens so that it doesn't get overgrown and look abandoned. We are so grateful for the work you have done, Susan, Marilyn, and Chris. Thank you. They are asking for our help now. It's time to put the gardens to bed for the season, and that's more than a three-person job. So if you are able, on Saturday, the 19th of this month, between 9.30 and noon, we would sure appreciate any help you can come and offer. We're going to gather here at the church and bring your gardening gloves and whatever tools you like to use. We will be socially distanced, but we will be together and we'll be working around this building that we love so much. So I'm going to be here, and I hope that I will get a chance to see you and catch up with you here on Saturday the 19th between 9.30 and noon. If you have any questions or want to offer anything that you have that might be of help to, to us, you can call Sue Lee. The information on this and her number is in your weekly emailed announcements. Friends, as you have been forgiven, now go into a world that needs your forgiving, healing love. Bring peace and hope to others, sharing God's love with them in all its forms. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may God look upon you with kindness and grant you peace. Amen.